Hello, Health Science 4502 students. This is Professor Van Dyke with your Week 10 video. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing well. I was very, very happy to read your midterms for uh, the second midterm. You all did wonderfully. Um, keep up the great work and we'll finish strong for this semester. Everybody is well on track to get very high scores in this class, which doesn't surprise me because I know you're all very bright and very diligent students. So keep up the great work. And um, we'll move into uh, some general announcements here. Uh, make sure that you have your paper and your presentation, at least get it started. Uh, your paper is not due until Wednesday, November 25th, uh, right before, uh, right around Thanksgiving. So uh, if you get your paper done early, send it to me and I'll review it and let you know how you're doing. And um, usually uh, I'm, I'm pretty lenient with grading papers uh, for this class. I know that uh, there's a lot of work and this has been a real challenge to try to um, do a, a lecture and a lab online for you. So I, I encourage you to keep up the great work and submit the paper early so that way I can um, check it off for you and, and edit it if it needs to be edited. Now, this is something that you should put into a portfolio uh, before the uh, end of your college career. Uh, so make sure and keep that in mind. So your paper is due Wednesday, November 25th. And then your presentation is due Wednesday, December 2nd. So kind of back to back, uh, but you know, it should be fairly easy for you to, to get that done if you're uh, diligent and, and keep a, uh, a good schedule for yourself. And that's the tough part about online courses. So with that, let's jump into the lecture. So we're talking about ergonomics today. Um, this is the uh, PowerPoint for uh, what is essentially week 10. And ergonomics is pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and, and jump into it and move forward. Uh, this was a um, presentation that was put together by some of my um, very bright students that had taken this course in the past. On to slide two, so what is ergonomics? Um, this is essentially a breakdown of the word uh, ergos meaning work, uh, namos meaning laws, and uh, so ergonomics is the laws of work. And this is something that's really important. and as a manager who's going to have a lot of staff that are going to be working in and out of the field, this is something that you really want to pay attention to because it really is um, one of the most frequent um, damaging things that a worker can experience. Obviously, this happens over many years. It's not something that happens overnight, but uh, you really want to protect your workers to keep them uh, happy and satisfied throughout their careers, and, and certainly ergonomics is, is a way to do that. So uh, on to slide three, what does that essentially mean? So we're talking about the laws of work. It's pretty nebulous. It doesn't really give you a lot of information. So we're going to move into that here and, and kind of break it down a little bit in regard to what we can and can't do, what we should and shouldn't do. So on to slide four. So ooh, ooh, excuse me. Um, ergonomics is basically going to be the process of where you design the job and the equipment and work tasks to fit into the human form. So we are shaped and designed to do very specific things. Um, sitting at a computer for hours on end is not one of those things that we are designed to do. So we look into the body's dimensions and mobility and uh, certain stress behaviors in regard to how we type and stand and work and, and sit. So in short, we wanna make the work fit the person not the other way around. So your desk should be very specific. Now, that's the interesting thing is that for the most part, every desk is the exact same height. But if I'm 6'5", or if I'm 4 feet 9", obviously that's not going to work very well for me. So I, I need to take that into consideration, certainly as a manager, but also as a staff worker as well. So you really need to pay attention to the individual uh, with regard to ergonomic tasks, and, and this can be something that is, is challenging. Now, in general for this, um, we're, we're really going to be talking about the work setup, but imagine you work for like a, a large processing facility that goes through uh, 100 packages an hour where you're constantly grabbing and, and sorting and moving. Um, imagine this. So the, the most common um, accident that can occur on the job is picking up a box and turning and setting that box somewhere else. It's very damaging to your back. So with regard to ergonomics, we're gonna be talking about light and desks and things like that for this. But you can also think about an ergonomic setup when you think about repetitive task motion. So if you have an individual that's doing this all day long, eventually they're gonna hurt their back. So if you set up the work environment to fit the physical form, you really are making sure to do the very best you can to limit those repetitive motion um, 
disabilities that essentially will occur over time if you do not protect your workers. So you will have repetitive stress injuries with your staff if you don't take care of these things and manage them appropriately. So on to slide five. Uh, as you look with the posture of the chair, what, you, what you'll notice is that there are a lot of 90 degree angles. Uh, so you look at the bend in the knee uh, from the uh, lower leg to the upper leg, and you also look at the, the bend from the body, the torso, uh, and the thigh at the hip. So they are designed to be at 90 degrees approximately, as close as possible. So this is an upright sitting posture, and, and I want you to really notice that. So we'll, where you'll see with the eyes, the eyes are focused straight forward, and they're gonna be looking at a computer screen. Uh, so if you look at the individual on the right-hand side, the monitor's a little bit low, and certainly you can see that there's a little bit of an issue where the legs and the posture are not at a 90 degree angle. Um, so you know, certainly a, a, an issue here, um, but not so severe that um, you see with some people where they are looking at a computer and they're pronounced slight, um, they're, they have a very pronounced forward lean, which is, uh, as time goes by, it's going to develop some horrible posture, some very bad back pain, and um, definitely some issues associated with constantly putting your body forward to read off the computer. So um, again, uh, slide six, uh, we're looking at a, a, a declined sitting position. Uh, where you'll notice that the um, the user's thighs are inclined and uh, the buttocks are higher than the knee. This is definitely something that you don't want. Uh, the angle between the thigh and the torso is greater than 90 degrees, and the torso is vertical or slightly reclined. So the legs are vertical, uh, but this is certainly not a good posture for an individual uh, because of that um, declined sitting position, and this is something that you want to watch out for. So on to slide seven, um, this is a reclined sitting posture. Uh, again, there are a lot of issues with the chair here. Uh, the user's torso and neck are straight and there's a recline between 105 and 120 degrees from the thighs. Uh, this is something that you will occasionally see people do as they get more fatigued throughout the day. Uh, and the reclined sitting position is, is certainly not ideal um, where you have that 135 degree um, angle between uh, the the hip, the torso, and the uh, upper torso and the neck. So again, we really look for that 90 degree posture throughout for an individual to be able to be uh, most comfortable on the job. On to slide eight. Uh, this is an issue in regard to posture with the feet. Uh, so with the individual on the left hand side, you can see that their posture allows for their feet to be directly on the ground and that they still are able to retain that 90 degrees throughout. And then if you look at the individual on the right, you'll see that they are using a, uh, an adjustable footrest, um, which is also a, a very good means uh, for fitting an individual into their work environment if the chair isn't exactly ideal, if it, if it doesn't allow for them to um, work properly. Now you really see this with desks that are not adjustable. So as I'd mentioned before, a lot of our, our desks are standard height and you need to be able to fit those individuals into that workspace uh, and, and allow them to be able to retain those 90 degree positions between the knee and the hip and the torso. So with slide nine, now this is very important. So the hand position is, is vital and um, you really want that natural wrist posture to be you know, something that you can do. And, and we've come a long ways with regard to wrist rests for keyboards, keyboard shelves, articulating keyboard shelves, and even mouse pads that allow for a more natural posture with your wrist. So you want your hand, wrist, and forearms to be straight and roughly parallel to the floor. Uh, your shoulders should be relaxed and your upper arms should hang normally at the side of your body. So a lot of the time you'll, you'll, you know, you'll be tensed up here, um, and that's not what you want. You want more of a normal, natural posture. Uh, so elbows stay in close to the body and are bent uh, 90 and 120 degrees. So your elbows should uh, really be uh, something that it is generally going to be right about at 90 degrees. You, you really want to keep that and you want to keep your um, arms, your forearms, your wrists, 
pretty much parallel to the ground. They should be in a straight line. When you begin to bend your wrists back or forward, you can generate issues in regarding um, carpal tunnel syndrome, which is very dangerous. You don't want that. So definitely keep that in mind that these are things that you really want to stay focused on to make sure that you and your workers don't develop carpal tunnel syndrome after years of working on the job because these are things that um, can be very costly and they can be very damaging to the individual. It certainly will um, diminish your uh, enjoyment in retirement if you've had to have this surgery done. On to slide 10. So with uh, the desk distance, um, and, and again, these are all pretty straightforward, you know. So with ergonomics, this study is um, designed to make this easy for you as a manager to make sure that your your staff are uh, well taken care of and, and that everything is um, working very well for them. But certainly uh, when you're working with desks that are all the same height, it can be a challenge and you want to make sure that you uh, minimize those risks for your workers. So with eye distance from your monitor, you want about 20 to 40 inches um, from the eye to the surface of the computer and um, you know again these are pretty standard values that that um, have been done through NIOSH and OSHA to be able to develop the most appropriate and best means for workers to work so this is going to limit your eye strain uh, which will cut down on things like headaches and tired eyes and sore eyes and drier itchy eyes and double vision as well so you really want to be able to make sure that you don't have that eye strain and then your phone should be held next to the ear uh, by the hand and not by uh, the neck. You, you don't want to crouch your neck over. Um, and I've seen like older style phones that actually had a neck support that would allow you to do that. It's a horrible thing to do. And certainly if you find yourself doing that regularly, you might want to talk to your supervisor about getting a headset that actually works with your phone. Uh, this is going to cause a lot of problems with your neck. Um, if one person uses the phone for a long period of time, they should really consider using that headset that's going to work out much better for those individuals. And, and it's going to uh, generate more worker satisfaction and more productivity from your worker because they're not constantly in pain. So you look at the, the top um, picture that's in the blue, the 20 to 40 inches, uh, that's roughly the distance. Uh, but again, you look at this individual, her arms are not exactly parallel to the floor. Her knees are bent at um, 90 degrees, but her posture is slightly back a little bit, which, is, you know, it's not too bad. But again, you know, you really want to try to uh, limit that as much as possible. And then you look at the worker um, with the white collared shirt uh, that's working off of a laptop. Uh, she's a little too close to the screen. She's getting eye strain. And she's also leaning forward very much to um, look at that computer screen, which is not ideal for that individual worker. So definitely keep those pictures in mind. And then you see the, the picture with the phone below that. Um, this is an individual. You see the smile on their face and the, the screen on the left. They look much happier working with that headset as opposed to the individual who looks like they're in pain on the right photo. On to slide 11. So height and distance um, from the monitor. Again, um, adjusting the height of the monitor so that the top of the screen is about 10 to 20 degrees below your horizontal line of sight and it should have a slight tilt up at about 10 to 20 degrees so that the screen remains perpendicular to your gaze. So as you remember with perpendicular, I don't think there's any mystery there. So uh, again, values that are easy to, um, to make comparisons on. So you look at these things, you figure out, you can use a basic protractor to figure out, you know, are these um, height and distance acceptable? Uh, if you do wear bifocals, trifocals, or progressive lenses, you may have to locate the monitor even lower because obviously you're using the lower part of the lens on the glasses, and you want to take that into consideration for your workers. Uh, you want to keep your screen free from dust and fingerprints, and make sure that your monitor is positioned to, so that it's not catching a glare from a window or other monitors or things like that. You really want to make sure that um, you're not getting glare off of your computer screen, and um, certainly um, they do have anti-glare devices that you can fit over your screen uh, but the new the new um, screens do a very good job of making sure that you don't have these issues on to slide 12 so lighting is very important for an office and certainly there are standards for lighting um, but you you want to have it so that it's not difficult to see and this can be caused by bright light or dim light uh, you certainly don't want to read in a room that has dim light 
And at the same time, uh, a very bright room can have issues associated with glare on a computer screen. So these can cause eye strain and irritation, blurred vision, um, dry and burning eyes, and headaches as well. So uh, there's actually a standard based on the amount of times that employees should blink while they're looking at their computers. And they tend not to uh, blink in as high a volume if they're working off of a computer on a regular basis. So it's something that you just kind of remind your staff about to, that um, they want to make sure that they're still blinking along with all these other ergonomic concerns. So on to slide 13, um, lighting should produce a, a good visual environment. So sufficient light is going to be um, source light coming from the correct direction. Obviously, uh, you want this to be um, as close to directly above you as possible uh, so that you're not catching glare from the light coming in at an angle. But again, obviously, you're not going to have lighting, fluorescent bulbs, um, over every cubicle in your office. So you, you do your best uh, to set up the office so that um, light does a good job of, of uh, making sure to illuminate the sources of, of your work. And you also want to make sure that it, it doesn't cause obscuring shadows. So, you know, like with a monitor, if the light's at too far of an angle, the uh, shadow will come from the monitor and can potentially block some of the work that you're actually doing. So you want to make sure that the lighting source is not making a shadow. And you see this a lot with desk lamps and things like that. So you really want to make sure that uh, your workers have the appropriate lighting. You want a good contrast with the computer screen. So obviously you don't want it so bright that it's washing out the screen. And you don't want it so dim that the computer screen is generating much brighter light than the, the ambient lighting around you. Uh, this will assist in um, eliminating glare and um, eliminating those e extreme contrasts. And it's very important, so keep that in mind as well. So uh, slide 14 uh, shows a, a good um, setup for light. Uh, in regard to working at a, a task area. So you see the desk at the bottom. And um, if you look at the top with the top lighting on the left hand side, uh, they're going to be parabolic louvers and the overhead light fixtures. So it means that they're going to have a little bit of a, um, a concave shape in the middle. Uh, but you're also going to see um, suspended indirect light, uh, which is going to be uniform, which is on the right hand side of the lighting. And then you can also have like indirect lighting sources reflecting off of like a matte finished wall. So you don't want like a high gloss wall uh, and you want that nice indirect lighting that's going to be kind of pinging off of these lights. So obviously you want a, a, a softer color um, like a white, uh, a Navajo white is getting a little too dark usually uh, in regard to an office space. So that's why you usually see the walls are going to be white. And then you see the vertical blinds on the windows. Uh, which are going to help for um, utilizing outdoor light sources as well. So if there's a glare on your eyes as you work, uh, you want an anti-glare screen on your computer or adjustable blinds on the windows, which is pretty important too. So you want to be able to manipulate the environment to match what's, what's taking place. So if the sun hits your window at exactly the same time every day, that can be problematic and it can cause very heavy shadows on the work that you're doing. On to slide 15. Now this is a standing desk and again you'll notice that um, with the standing desk there is some some slight variability in regard to the sitting position, the sitting posture. So you'll notice that um, the distance to the screen is cut down a little bit and this will have some um, some positive effects when you're working uh, and you'll you'll have a slightly different tilt on the monitor so uh, obviously um, you know you're going to be between 20 and 28 inches from the monitor it should be at eye level to about the one third point on the screen. Uh, and again, you know, you want your elbows bent between 90 and 120 degrees, where 90 is the optimal bend um, on the elbows or slightly, um, slightly increased from there. Uh, your shoulders should be relaxed and your wrists, again, you want your wrists parallel to the floor. One of the things that's nice about this standing desk is that you can, you can these can actually be adjustable. Uh, and it's nice for the workers, but you also want to consider the fact that they're going to be standing at their desk for a period of time. So anti-fatigue mats can be really nice for these individuals that are working at a standing desk. So on to slide 16. Um, the, the first quote is essentially that um, sitting is the new smoking. Uh, we like to be standing now. It increases our ability to be uh, move around a little bit. 
uh, and it increases blood flow a little as opposed to being sitting you know, in the sitting position. It's uh, good for your legs. Um, obviously, there are some issues in regard to standing for extended periods of time. Uh, so the, the adjustable standing desk is usually the ideal desk. That way you can sit down and stand up. They adjust very quickly, but again, you have to keep in mind that there is slight difference in regard to the distance that you want to be away from your monitor and things like that, depending on whether you're standing or if you're sitting. So if you look at this worker here, um, if she had her keyboard uh, above on the, on the top platform, you'd notice that that would be a little bit too high. So sitting is going to help prevent neck and back strain. It's going to um, give you more mobility, and it's also going to help in regard to um, type 2 diabetes. So this can be something that's very positive for these workers. On to slide 17. Uh, so you'll notice these individuals, obviously the, the person on the far left is craning their neck up to see their monitors, which is not good. And they also have a light source that's directly behind them, which is going to make a heavy shadow on their working area. If you look at the individual in the middle, you can see that their knees are bent, uh, that this is not the ideal posture. And then you also look uh, at their, um, their neckline, uh, their gaze is far below them. Uh, because we're working on laptops quite a bit these days, this is one of those postures that a lot of the time we very frequently use, and, and it can be fairly damaging if you do this for an extended period of time. And certainly you'll notice that his eyes are um, quite a distance from the work, and, and they're looking down onto the work, where the far right position is actually a very good position to be in. They're able to move their legs, uh, and you'll notice that the left leg is... Uh, fairly parallel to the workspace um, and, and that's going to be a, a good way to work. Now the arms are slightly lower than ideal uh, but again you know this is definitely something that uh, um, is is not perfect but it's a little better. Now you'll notice that his monitors are far too low uh, so again this is not the ideal scenario but it, again you'll see that his back and shoulders and arms are in a fairly straight line until you get to the elbows and that's where it kind of starts to fall apart for this individual on the far right screen. So uh, if you're working on, on slide 18 now, if you look at the standing desk, uh, this is a great example and, and this is one of the, uh, the setups that can be, um, you can sit or you can stand, which is ideal for uh, a worker. So uh, this is the Ergotron um, WorkFit S, which is a dual. Uh, he also has a dual monitor with a Workspace Plus, which is a lot of usable space for this individual. They can stand up, they can sit down, they have the dual monitors to work off of, and again, uh, your nose, the center of your eyes, should be um, basically set up so that they're um, in direct line with the center of those two monitors. So obviously, uh, this is a, a little different setup, but it allows you um, great, great um, opportunities to have a, a good working station that is uh, really most conducive for an individual from an ergonomic standpoint. Slide 19 shows an anti-fatigue mat. Uh, this works very well for individuals that spend a lot of time uh, standing in one place. Uh, so there have been some studies that indicate that standing without moving for an extended period of time is not ideal. Uh, it can do things like make um, spider veins uh, and other veins in your legs be more pronounced. Uh, blood can kind of sit in those, um, uh, those very small veins and you can have some problems with that. Where an anti-fatigue mat is very nice and it works out very well for your workers as well. On to slide 20. Uh, don't forget to take your breaks. So in an office environment, you should take about a 10-minute break every hour. Now, unfortunately, there are some um, uh, organizations that don't allow you to do that. Uh, it certainly can be uh, a challenge to sell your boss on the idea that you need a 10-minute break every single hour. So again, if you can kind of squeeze those in, uh, it's a good thing. And as a manager, uh, you might want to encourage your workers, if you've seen them working for an extended period of time, to just take a short break, you know, and, and certainly there's uh, a requirement that um, you take, a you know, two 10-minute uh, breaks um, interspersed throughout the day. So usually what you get is, a, um, you know, you, you work for a couple hours, you take a 10-minute break, then you work for a couple hours and you have lunch, then you work for a couple hours and you take another break. So this can be very good. It's gonna reduce muscle tension and increase circulation, so it's gonna be conducive to, to 
better thought processes and it's going to stimulate um, your muscles and your brain as well and it's going to avoid um, deep vein thrombosis which um, it is an interesting process in and of itself it's not something that's ideal uh, to sit for an extended period of time so that's why when people fly uh, they're encouraged to uh, get up and use the restroom every once in a while if you have a three to four hour flight uh, you can actually develop blood clots that are very dangerous for an individual, especially as you reach older age. On to slide 21. Um, these are some ergonomic breaks. If you are sitting for an extended period of time uh, and typing for an extended period of time, these are things that you absolutely should do. Uh, take that finger and wrist flexor stretch uh, and also the hamstring stretch as well, just to kind of keep your body uh, in motion and increase the flexibility in those areas and um, you know not causing issues in regard to um, some of the the extended periods that you may be typing for hours on end and as a student uh, you might want to you might want to consider working this into your schedule these are things that you um, should do on an occasion especially if you're working um, typing up that uh, paper that you're going to be writing for this class so on to um, the, the continuing on slide 22 uh, this is the finger and wrist extensor um, stretch and then you also have the lower back flexor stretch and these are things that are really good to to do from time to time to just kind of keep these in mind and those four stretches are are good as a manager uh, you should walk your staff through those stretches and, and uh, make sure that you communicate to them that this is an appropriate use of their time that they should be taking care of themselves on to slide 23 you have the neck and shoulder stretch um, and so you can kind of read through those and, and uh, get an idea of how this one works. It's, it looks kind of weird. Uh, the diagram is terrible, but uh, if you read through the neck and shoulder stretch, it's actually, um, it feels pretty good when you do it on a regular basis. So slide 24 is the references for this material. I appreciate my students for um, doing this. So as you're, uh, as, you're, as you're working for an extended period of time, Keep this in mind and uh, actually go back to those stretches and, and see how they feel. See how they make you feel while you're working, when you're typing that paper. Because I know it's kind of long. Uh, if you do it all in one sitting, uh, which I hope you don't, um, definitely practice these stretches, okay? So um, with your lab, what I would like for you to do is take a look at a workstation. Um, hopefully you have a workstation. Uh, if you're working on a desk or if you're working at a table at a, at a, at a laptop, uh, I want you to analyze your workstation and tell me how you're doing. And this is going to be your lab for week 10. Uh, and I'll, I'll definitely post that on uh, Blackboard as well. So you can uh, go ahead and respond to that lab. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, congratulations on doing a wonderful job on exam two. You all put a lot of thought into these answers, I could tell. So um, keep up the great work and finish strong for this semester. And I look forward to uh, a lot of great papers and presentations and your um, lab for week 10. So thank you so much and have a wonderful week.